Education is the movement for darkness to light. The highest education is that which does not merely give us information but makes our life in harmony with all existence. To provide quality of education to people of the then Hyderabad state, the University College of Arts and Social Sciences, Usmania University was established by Mir Usman Ali Khan. For constructing the college, a team of experts traveled across the world to fetch perfect design and person who could design an historical masterpiece. The credit for the present architecture of the building is attributed to Monsieur Jasper, a Belgian architect. He prepared a detailed plan of all the university building and it was executed by Nawab Zain Yar Jung. Later, Nawab was awarded Padma Bhushan for his services to the field of architecture. The unspoiled structure reveals majesty and is the heart of 100 years of Usmania University. This college is popularly known as Arts College and it is one of the major heritage structure in Telangana. The architecture of the building is stunning and blows the mind of the people. The building is built with pinkish granite stones which represents harmonious blend of pillar and in the style of Ajanta and Elora. If one goes into the detail of the architecture, the arches of the building are of Indo-Saracenic tradition. The octagonal pillars are similar to the columnar architecture found in Ajanta and Elora caves which support the entire structure of the first floor. The college exterior can be divided into the centerpiece consisting of a grand arch with a huge doorway designed after the Persian Pistak or the mosque of yesteryears. The huge doorway with its marvelous arch welcomes the staff, students and all the visitors to the striking interior. On the either side of the centerpiece are two double storied colonnaded galleries, each reflection of the other. Experts, best of the experts are engaged. They came, they saw, and at the same time, officials concerned with education, Nawab Ali Raza, Nawab Zainu Jan. These two people are shared with education in the Nizam's government. Haider Akbar was secretary to the Ministry of Education, advisor to the Nizam's government. They pooled their ideas together, discussed with the Nizam, other officials of the education department, other experts, and they decided to send first a team to visit Europe and other foreign countries and then build the ideas for the construction of the university and a university building. That team started visiting Europe, they went to US, Australia, all the places and started visiting all the places in Europe extensively. Because you should remember Europe is a place where Roman and Greek cultures have fused their ideas and they have imposed it on Europe. So some of the oldest universities, some of the best universities, best executed built with best of the architectural features, best of the intellectuals are all located in Europe. So they were asked to go visit, meet, interact and generate ideas. And these people, they went. And they identified one man, a Belgian architect who was an expert in Oriental and Western style of art and architecture. Especially he was advised to Egypt God on education buildings. His name was Jasper. And the same team again went to every nook and corner of India, including Taj Mahal. Many people are not, they went to Taj Mahal also because Nizam said, I want something like Taj Mahal. Not in the memory of my beloved or beloveds but to promote education. The same serene atmosphere is here. It will have a solitary effect on the intellectual thinking. It will generate better minds. They went to Coimbatore, they went to Tinalveli, they went to Tanjore, other places. They found that skilled workers right from the ancient times known as Tapatis, their descendants were there. 
who are experts in stone cutting, stone masonry, sculpturing, woodwork and all. So carpenters and stone workers, they were got from there. They were provided residences here. Best of the facilities was provided. And their technical skill was used when the quarried stones were got here to chisel it and help in building of this building. Pinkish yellow granite. Pink, yeah, pinkish yellow granite. Bitumen, what you call in local colloquial chunam, that was also used. For working that, we needed blocks. Traditional method was used. A circle is drawn, a stone is kept, wooden rake, bullocks are used to crush the limestone to make chuma. It is boiled, it is crushed, it is boiled at a particular temperature and when the consistency is reached, it is taken out like gum and it is used. And before that, in that particular temperature only it has to be executed. If the temperature goes away or reduces, it cannot you know, stick. And they used it in the execution of this building. Then the question came in you know, a wood. Where do we get the wood from? Nirmal was identified. Lot of you know forest cover, good timber, and from there wood was cut, exposed to sun, rain, seasoned after a certain period of time, it was got in blocks. And the same workers who were experts in carpentry were used to make the doors, all these things. Especially the main door, you can see how well chiseled and executed it is. The magnanimous size of the building, gigantic size, which can be noted even from far, is nothing but Greco Roman Saracenic style of art and architecture. So minimum sculpturing has been used for simple reason, it should be an educational center center or temple for higher learning. Decoration has been used in the form of the principles of Quran. What does it ordain? Geometrical designs or mathematical designs can be executed in social buildings. Different kingdoms came up. One such kingdom which came up after them was Asaf Shahi kingdom who are also known as the Zams of Hyderabad. Hyderabad became the focal point, their capital, and they started ruling. And what they designed and established was the modern Hyderabad state. Seven rulers ruled. The seventh man was Mir Osman Ali Khan, heralded to be the richest person at that point of time. Most of the public utility buildings, what you find in present Hyderabad state, which is the capital of Telangana state now, erstwhile Andhra Pradesh, where all those things which were designed and built, executed and used during his time, same things have been used, including this wonderful Arts, Arts College and Osman University. It's a gift of the ruler, seventh ruler, Mir Osman Ali Khan. That's why it is named as Osman Yanis. Osman Yanis. It is named Osman Mir Osman Ali Khan. Yes. He is always referred in records as his exalted highness a title which was given and bestowed on him by the local populace due to the influence of the british this is in Jabu. now look at usman how how the idea of usman in a city how the idea for creating a university for propelling higher education in and around hyderabad especially to provide a platform from which the local natives can acquire knowledge, wisdom and get into employment and they can go to the world, spread their wisdom and knowledge. How it was designed, how the idea was floated, how it came to existence, how it fortified it.
Once you look at the building, you are attracted, you come towards it. Flight of steps magnanimously executed with Mughal parapets. You come to the main door, a mammoth gigantic door, which is nothing but a door opening into the heaven. Then the eyes goes up. When eyes goes up and the view is drawn to the top portion, you'll find tri executed tri arches. And you have multi dimensional hexagonal parts executed in different places. And very carefully chiseled, screened stone screens for the arches and windows from there. What is happening inside? Only people after inside, they should know what it is. Education should be done when there is no sound pollution, where serenity is there. So others start peeping inside, you are disturbed. So this concept. When you look up, your eyes are so arrested that it creates an optical illusion, three-dimensional effect. You will feel as though you are moving around. Then you come to the main place, which is known as the well-laid corridors and a central place which is having a well-polished granite floor. You come to flight of steps first. The first floor, underneath the cellar, first no idea of classes was there when they executed the cellar. In the cellar was a place where certain things could be kept as a store. And in case there is water, heavy rains and flooding, that should take the brunt. Brent in the sense they should be free flow of water. That's how it was designed for that. So you come to the granite floor. That granite floor with the floral design attracts you. Then your mind runs to the dome. A bulbous dome on the top, which is a common Islamic feature. Why domes are built? For ventilation. Fresh air. For mag giving magnanimity to the building. Even in summer, the height is so fixed that the real heat doesn't come. And many Islamic buildings, double dome technique is used. One dome over the other with unseen vents and Kalasha, which is a Hindu future on the top. For the air to go, hot air to go, fresh air to come in. Fresh air will come in and it will push out. And it will give that cooling air condition effect. Old buildings with high height, you will not find this heat. Heat effect is very minimum. Radiation is very minimum. That you can have. It's not a double dome, single dome, but with all ventilated units. You come to the flight of the steps. When you find the steps and look at the right and left side, center, on the left side you'll find seven arches. Very beautifully executed. Many people don't know it has been done to you know mark as a mark of respect for these seven Nizams who ruled the Hyderabad State. Even the main administrative officer, vice chancellor, registrar, rector, all these people, headquarters was located here. And from it is this building that it came to function. Osman University came to function before other buildings came up. Now this what arches you find here which has been executed which can be seen in the flowing corridors and in the frontal portion of the building they are nothing but executed on the design of the arches what you find in Ajanta Ellora Kings. They are known as horseshoe arches. Then the pillars which is common to Islamic as well as Hindu architecture even you know Greek or Roman. This parapet with minimum sculpturing with ventilation is something which is known as Mughal feature. Right? Minimum Sculpturing or art features, only art features in the form of stucco, chunam, in the form of floral and geometrical designs in the main part of the building at the entrance under the dome and the side walls. Fissures are very slippery. To say that a student is as good as a fish, he needs to need a direction to swim and he needs something to focus and latch on. That is nothing but knowledge that was executed mainly for them. Uh, drive a sense of understand minds of the children that you should be focused in what you do, what you gain. Landscape the flowing garden with a running fountain. So that's how the center of education should be. That's how it was executed. 